Hi, Lumi. How are you? Hi, Loredana. Good. How are you? I'm fine. Really happy to see you. We're trying to share some experiences around how was the B2B Prospecting Academy for you uh, and to understand, you know, um, first of all, perhaps who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Lumi Dokia. Um, I'm based in Germany, in Stuttgart, and I'm working here for, uh, for Senet, a company that is uh, manufacturing software for manufacturing. I'm in charge of the global marketing and sales support, uh, with that saying also the part of lead generation awareness and um, other marketing activities. Um, we have branches in uh, USA, in Japan, China, France, France, Romania, and as I said, Germany, but we are uh, doing from here, from Stuttgart, the marketing for um, the entire um, globe. Last year, uh, you've decided to join us for the B2B Prospecting Academy. Why, why did you decide to join? What uh, helped you decide? <laughs> so 2020 was a strange year and we were forced uh, in marketing and in sales uh, to think outside the box. Um, so the B2B Prospecting Academy was um, the right choice and the right way to think outside the box to learn something new about the processes and to get also um, some expertise from NNC regarding the different uh, lead generation possibilities and it was very interesting also to uh, be part of a group and to discuss about the possibilities. Let's say, what were some of the challenges with prospecting or understanding the new, let's say, digital prospecting? And uh, how did the program help you maybe understand better or, or overcome some of these challenges? I think getting through to people and engaging them is a very hard thing to do. Uh, with the social media, there is no longer so hard to get the right people, to find the right people but it's very difficult to start with them a conversation and get them to open up. Um, it is almost an art of starting a dialogue by listening. It helped us articulate the unique selling point and the messages that we were, are trying to transmit. Um, also, it was very interesting because um, we, during the program, we have created a prospecting playbook that uh, helped us to go through and to reach the target clients. And um, we discovered a lot of new tools that we can use to easy the lead generation process. And I love how you mentioned the, the playbook because, you know, having a process is one and, and helping participants develop a process around prospecting is a very um, important value proposition with the program. Uh, prospecting is not a one-time event, right? So even people that we know, if we just maybe call them once or message them once, they won't even remember <laughs> what, what we wanted or when we last talked. But you have to maintain and grow that relationship. So doing this for a while, having a systematic process around how to approach new relationships and so on, it's, it's really, really important. Have you had any like, uh, important takeaways, things that you took from the program that you didn't have before, but they became part of your habit, something that stayed with you afterwards? Um, there are a lot of things, but I think one of the most important is, um, even if it sounds simple and clear, is practice. Uh, <laughs> simply taking the time to plan and to practice. Um, um, I think what I learned during the process is it is very important to uh, let someone else listen uh, to your sales or marketing pitch and to get the feedback. Um, normally, we are going every day and we think that we know how do we express ourselves and what we are saying and we believe that the clients do listen to what we are saying and they have the same reaction as we want them to have. Uh, but I learned during the process that uh, it, it is not like that. With the Prospecting Academy, by, by having those uh, play roles during the, the session, I realized that 
it's very important to take the time to prepare and take the time to let somebody else listen and to get the feedback. So I think this was the best takeaway from the program from, for me. Yeah, and as you said, because we have different backgrounds, but even because we're from different companies, everybody had a different perspective and was listening from a different, uh, let's say, role or company size or types. So uh, the, the input was really valuable. And what I love it is that we still have this group to consult on an ongoing basis. So some of the people in the group develop their own relationships, you know, starting the actual program. Was there anything we could have done better? Something we could have really improved or, or improved your experience? <laughs> so uh, as everything that is nice and good, you want it to last longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I guess I would have wished for the program to uh, be a little bit more longer. Mm -hmm. And also I think um, we learned a lot and it was um, at high speed. I think maybe uh, taking a little bit the time to to dig deeper in the different uh, um, tactics that we learn, um, it would have been useful. But e even so, it was perfect as it was. Who do you think now, based on on your own experience, who do you think that would be best to go through this coaching program? Like, what kind of a role in what type of a company? You know, who do you think can get the most out of it? So co coming from an international company and being in the uh, marketing department, at the beginning I was a little bit reluctant if this is something uh, for marketing also, because when you hear prospecting, you automatically think about sales. Um, but I have to say that I think it's relevant also for the sales and for the marketing people and also for the ones that are doing something like business development, uh, because it helps you understand better the processes from one side and the other and also because i think nowadays um, marketing and sales have to work together and there is no uh, clear line between uh, what marketing or sales is doing just read um, a, a research uh, actually it's like a predictive uh, paper by uh, gartner about what's happening this year in marketing and sales and they are expecting that these departments are going to fuse because um, so, so they're going to merge basically uh, because it seems that uh, in the past that there was a lot of uh, misalignment between marketing and sales and now with aligning marketing and sales more and more but also with all this digital space which needs more speed and, and faster reactions from both marketing and sales it seems that uh, even big companies are expected that the marketing and sales roles are going to be under one single department or umbrella is there anything else you'd like to add about the program or about your experience something relevant for other future participants just that i highly recommend the program and um a big thanks to to you and to nnc because um not every company is sharing the knowledge that they have. Also, I'm looking forward to join other uh, programs that you are doing. <laughs> yes, great. We're going to launch two more programs this year. One is the postponed marketing, uh, digital marketing program, which we've moved for probably Q2 we're going to launch. And another one we're going to do uh, on marketing automation, but it's probably going to be uh, tool agnostic because we partner with many tools to provide automation as you know, integrated end-to-end -end automation in marketing and sales. So um, in Q3, in autumn uh, we're going to launch the marketing automation program as well and, and i'm gonna make sure that <laughs> you are also invited thanks so much lumi you've been very generous with your uh, kind feedback and, and advice to to our participants and uh, we look forward to you know hearing more about you and said it and and the success you've had thank you loredana also nice thanks. talking to you